So this is gonna be the first video in a new little series that I'm gonna do called Edit Like a Pro. Now, hopefully you have Adobe Lightroom because that's the program I'm going to be using here, but I wanna give you some tips and tricks on how to use this program more efficiently and um, find some of the functions that are kind of buried in the program and you wouldn't know about. So um, I might break these up into a bunch of separate videos because there's a lot of stuff in here and um, I want them to be short and something that you know can be really useful. You can just come and find it on our channel in the Lightroom playlist and um, you know when you need to know what it is. And in the description of this video, I'm actually gonna put what I'm talking about in each video. So you can actually look in the description and see if it's the one that you want to look at. Okay, Lightroom is one of those programs that is kind of the industry standard for photo editing and we've been using it for years and years and we really love it. I'm in this program every single day Every picture I take, no matter you know which camera I'm using or what I'm doing, it, it comes through this program. Uh, it's how I organize all my images. But there are some things that can get very confusing and there are some shortcuts that can make life uh, a little more simple for you. So a couple of the things I'm gonna start with are just the like basics of how you have Lightroom structured that just make things move quickly. The first thing I'm going to talk about is how you can quickly cull all your images and then once you have the ones you want, how you can rate them or you know add a flag to them or however you want to, if there's some rating system that you like to use for your images so you can kind of you know separate the good ones from the bad ones. Um, so let's jump into the program. What I'm showing you here is this is a uh, folder I have when uh, we were shooting our Disneyland book. Uh, there's 1,852 images in this folder. On your keyboard, you're going to want to press caps lock. Okay, and once it's locked, now I'm on the first image here. So there's two things you can do here. You can set ratings and then you can also set whether you want the image or if it's a, you know, out of focus or you know it's an image you don't need, you can actually set it to be rejected. So the way you do this is on the keyboard, you P and X. So watch as I go through this, I'm gonna quickly go through these. And as I look at each image, I'll decide if I wanna keep it or not. So this one I'm gonna keep, this one I'm gonna keep, this one I'm keeping, I'm deleting that one. I'm gonna delete that one. This one I want, I don't want that one. I want that one, I don't want that, I don't want that. Now what happens is, after you're done with this, you can come up into the photo menu and hit delete rejected photos and they'll be gone. Okay, I'm not gonna do that, but um, that's what you can do with that. Now, if I wanted to continue on with this, let's say instead of deleting them, I wanna give them a rating. So as I'm going along here, as long as caps lock is on, so let's say this is an image I don't want. Okay, but this is one I do want, but I wanna rate it. I just click the number two. So the ratings between one and five, you just click those and it'll apply that rating to it. So all the images you keep, you can rate at the same time as you're going through them and deciding if you want them or not. So this is a tip that's great and it makes your workflow uh, a lot faster. We're gonna jump into the develop module here and I'm gonna show you another thing that just makes life a little easier when you're moving around inside Lightroom. I've talked about this in older videos, but um, you know maybe just it's good to mention it again. So if you look on the right side here, I have all the different panels here. I have the tone curve, and then down here I have detail, transform, and once you start working and you have all of these open, it can become uh, a little cumbersome to find what you want to do. Up here, all you have to do, right next to where it says basic, is basically right click, click solo mode, and now you can see all of the panels have been squashed down, and as you open one, the one you had open before closes. So if you look, all these are closed. I open lens correction, and then those closed. So it makes moving around inside Lightroom very easy. Uh, it's a little neater, a little more organized. And there's also another thing uh, relating to these panels right here. Sometimes when you're working on an image, um, these little sliders, like if I click on the highlights here and I wanna slide it, it's very hard to make a, a, a very precise movement. And if you roll the wheel on your mouse, it jumps in about five step increments. The way to get around this is to pull these sliders nice and wide. Now it's gonna make your image a little bit smaller, but now you can go by very small increments. As you can see, you can jump and it's very easy to make fine adjustments. Now you're not always gonna to wanna to do that, so you, you know, if you're not doing that, I'm working on a laptop. So, you know, my laptop has a small screen, so sometimes I don't need 
you know, I want the image to be large and I, I don't need to make that fine of adjustments to my images. But when I do, it's there, I can pull it over, make those minute adjustments, pull it right back. So I try to, you know, open up my um, editing space here as big as I can on a small screen. And another thing to that is on the left side, you'll see there's these little anchor points. So now if I open up on the left here, I have all the presets. Now I don't really use presets much in my landscape images or anything like that. I prefer to work on each, you know, each image individually. But not everybody was like that. If you're shooting a wedding or you have a, a set of images that are almost the same and you want to put a preset on it and then work from there, you know, that's great. But you don't need to have them showing all the time on the left side of your screen. So there's that little arrow on the left corner here, boom, and it's gone. And you can do the same thing with the film strip on the bottom if you want to make the screen even bigger. Just a little like house cleaning uh, inside of Lightroom just to make the interface a little more manageable. Another thing you may want to do when you're working on an image is like this one here, it's already been edited. Now, once you get into an image and you're messing around with all the sliders and you're doing everything, you might want to say to yourself, oh, what, what did this look like? I, I don't even remember. So there's a quick way to look at this. Now, there's two ways you can do it. You can compare it to the original image or you can get a before and after view. So to get the before and after view, you click on the little slash key right above the enter key. It's not the backslash, it's the one to go the other way. So when you click on that, you get the before view. Go back and it's very easy to see back and forth. Now, if you want to compare it and actually look at the two of them next to each other, you click on the Y key and you can see this one is actually splitting the image. Now, there's different ways you can look at it. If you, right next to where it says before and after, if you cycle through this, it's going to show you different views. So this is the actual before and after, but you can actually inside the image, you can cut the image in half and show half of it without the adjustments and then half with. So that's a very useful thing. And I always want to go back to where I started and I like to see the, the progress I've made in an image. So that's something that's a, a very useful tool. So here's another tool inside of Lightroom, inside the develop panel that is, uh, I think invaluable, especially if you're doing a lot of heavy editing on an image. Um, but then you get to that point where you're like, oh, I, I might have overdone it. You're not sure what you want to do. And maybe you want to give it another try, but you don't want to lose what you have. So instead of like exporting it already, you can just make a copy of it. So I have an image here that there was a lot of work done to, and I'll show you the before. Okay, so that's the before, and here's the after. Now, if I wanted to get back to that before and try again without losing this finished image that I spent some time editing on, what I can do is right click on the image, and if you come here, it says create a virtual copy. So now down in the film strip here, you'll see there's another version of it right here. Okay, they're identical. All of my adjustments are on it. Everything that I've done to the image is there. So when I click on this one and this one, identical. So let's say I want to now reset this one. Okay, so there it is. It's back to its original state and I can start working with it again. And I still have the one that I already started with. When I've, I've taught Lightroom to a few people over the years and one of the big fears is that you're going to ruin your picture, that you're going to over edit or do something and you just can't get back to it. Being, knowing that you can, you know, quickly make a copy of whatever you're working on so that it's saved right there and you can just start doing it again and play around with the sliders and not have to worry about it, knowing that you can reset your image if you go too far. And you, these are all good things to know and you don't have to be afraid. Remember, uh, Lightroom is a non-destructive editing program. So your raw file is always sitting there unedited. Lightroom doesn't actually apply any of your edits to the image until you send it off and, you know, and export it to wherever you want it to go. It's great that you have the ability to go back to old images and re-edit them as your skills get better. Here's a little bonus tip uh, for the end of this video. Anything that you do in Lightroom, anything, doesn't matter. So here's this, this is the finished image. Now I've done this, this edit, this has been edited. So I'm gonna go in here and, oh my God, I over, I put that on and I, I did this. Oh, what'd you do? You're screwing it up, Bill. You messed up this whole image. Okay, so now the image looks terrible. How do I get out of this? Super simple. You can always backtrack in Lightroom. Control Z will always take you back a step. So if I hit it once, I go back one step. I hit it again, I go back another step. Hit it again, and I'm back to the image the way I had it. So you don't have to worry. You can always get back to where you go. Okay, so I hope this helped you. And in the next video, I'm gonna get into some more advanced editing techniques 
and we're going to start using the tools. I'm going to show you some shortcuts and some things you might want to do while you're actually editing your images. Okay, see you in the next one.